Hey, why do we pick a fruit shaped exactly like my head? Just stop talking, you're ruining my concentration. You're fine, chill. He's gonna die. Yeah. Ah! In almost 40 years, the Ninja Turtles crossed generations. So what was your first contact with this universe? Probably the toys for me. I mean, 100%, yeah. they've, they've been around longer than we've been alive. Like yeah. the Ninja Turtles are, they outlive all of us. The animated series came out in 19... 87, I want to say, so I was around five years old. Um, so I watched the cartoon and loved it. I had the toys when the toys came out. My my dad bought a big box of them at a garage sale, I remember. I was really like the target audience for a lot of this stuff when it was first coming out when I was a kid. Um, and I was obsessed with it. I loved all of it. I, I did martial arts. I started taking karate because of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I had nunchucks. Um, so yeah, I was, I skateboarded. <laughs> probably because of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I knew about the cartoon, I liked it a lot, thought it was funny. Um, I had a skateboard and my deck was a Michelangelo deck. So I've got, I've got my fair share of history with them. I'd say the 2012 version show on Nickelodeon uh, and just being a fan ever since, collecting the toys and memorabilia, had keychains and lanyards, all that kind of stuff. and. Now my love has grown for it ever since. First memory I have was like with the with the TMNT thing was like the the Raphael size and I thought they were little swords. So I used to play with them during like playtime or like whenever I'd see people with like lunchboxes or shoes or backpacks that were TMNT themed and I was like, what is this? And then I remember watching the the series within the the Michael Bay movies. Chicken. What the heck are those things? Those are like little Shreks to me. From the creative point of view, what was the biggest challenge in updating the Ninja Turtles to a new generation without mischaracterizing them? Because they had a, have a lot of things that you love, so you know, but they need to update to a new generation. So how do you mix these things up? Honestly, part of it was was the cat. Like I think I think once we decided to cast actual teenagers, it instantly set it apart from every other version that there had been because like every other time it's like men in their 30s doing like teenager voices which it just is not the same. And so I knew that if we cast actual teenagers, it would like instantly do a lot of the heavy lifting for us as far as like putting it in the category of being something new and different, you know? I also think with like the popularization of Marvel movies and things like that, people are kind of like a little harder on the logic of this type of stuff than they maybe were in 1987. <laughs> and we actually did a lot of work like solidifying the like logic of the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like that took us around two years. <laughs> you talked about Marvel, but so I gotta ask, did your experience in the superhero world with the boys influence Mutant Mayhem on any level? If anything, I've learned that like, when adapting something, you have to just focus on making the best movie or TV show or whatever it is you're making you can. And by nature of doing that, you have to change some fundamental things in the source material from time to time. But if the thing is really good, no one cares. Like The Boys is like fundamentally very different from the comic and no one mind because the show's good, you know? And even if you love the comic, you don't care at all that we change that stuff for the most part because it just makes the show better. And I think you see that. And so that was actually very educational in, in, in doing this. And every great hero needs a great villain. So how was it for you to play Superfly? I loved it. You know, I, I was uh, honored to be asked to play Superfly, and I just knew that I could bring something cool to the character. He is the boss of New York. I wanted to make sure he had a touch of reality, but have fun too. That the character was memorable and uh, fun and funny, and that you wanted to see more Superfly. And did you know that you voicing Superfly wasn't the first crossover between the Ninja Turtles and NWA? Because artist Jared Fletcher did this homage to Straight Outta Compton. Oh man, I haven't seen that. That's pretty amazing. Do you approve it? Yeah, that's very cool. That's nice. I asked him to show you this and he personally asked to say that he's a great fan of yours, so. Thank you. It's and... amazing to see. <laughs> 
Yeah, and at one point of the film, there's a joke with Godzilla. And your son was, was in one of the films of that franchise. So would you say that mutant monsters are the family business now? <laughs> We love to be around the mutants. So you never know. You might see a, a Godzilla Superfly remix mixtape. You know, we might we might have to put a mixtape out. Uh. <laughs> so you were baby turtles who made contact with mystery goo. Well, we prefer the term ooze, but yeah. It's like more like, it's just nicer. It, it, it so. rolls off the tongue better, yeah. Ooze. 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 It's nice, right? Ooze. It's ooze. <laughs> And uh, April is a key part of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles mythology. So what was your favorite part about playing the character? She really is dedicated like to being a journalist, um, but also she is like a teenager in this iteration, which I think is so fun. Like she's not this adult who has it all together. She's also learning and growing. She's definitely, definitely got some growing to do. Um, and her and The turtles, I think their friendship feels like really strong, um, and because they're all around the same age, so yeah. yeah. And April is young, smart, and needs to join forces with a slightly misfit group. Mm. Would you say that playing Sydney in the Bear helped you to prepare for this role? Oh, I mean, yeah. I guess when you think about Sydney in, the, in that way, yeah, that is kind of like a somewhat similar. <laughs> sort of track um yes but i think the turtles like want to be friends with april and i feel like the first season of the bear sydney has definitely a harder time trying to fit in yeah the beef is, is a harder place it's a little bit rougher it's a little bit rougher but i don't know the beef over the sewers just like as a would you rather definitely the beef yeah. i feel for me personally and uh, i want to know what were the best parts of being a teenage mutant ninja turtles for you since you are the new turtles right it, i mean to add ninja turtle to all of our resumes Resume. like that's pretty sick guys like we're ninja turtles we're crime fighting turtle mutants it's like even just conceptually it's sick so to be able to lend my voice to a universe like this like i just feel incredibly lucky to be a part of something like this especially with such a history you know like 40 years of this franchise and we're we're the new guys dude. Yeah. we're ushering in a new generation of turtles and technically you are jack chan's disciples now so i want to know how do you intend to use such a power Yeah, I don't think it's it's every day you get to say that uh, Jackie Chan was was your father in in a, in a film. So yeah. and he taught you ninjutsu. Also. Yeah, and he yeah. taught us ninjutsu. So I mean, I I think we'd all use our powers for for good and just to help to, to help the humans. Well, speak for yourself, dude. I want to be a super villain, bro. Oh my God! Oh my, I'm gonna be sick. Leo, what happened? Is Donnie bleeding? It was an accident. Mike, you watch out!